who cure wounds. Yeah, he's feeling a lot better now. That's Spencer, thanks for the follow. No problem. Zeus, what say you? No, my son works, Shad. My son pays for everything that he buys. He he works. He is very responsible. I'm very hey. proud of him. Hey, there we go. Advantage. Nice That's a critical hit. Hey, nice crits. Let's use that dice mode, everybody. Nice nine damage. And skeleton is down. Skeleton is no more. Yeah, it is uh, incapacitated. You guys are out of combat. I kept waiting on the damn pirate voice to come out again. Ahoy there! Ahoy there! What, matey, what pirate voice are you talking about? You are a pirate. Hey, hey, diddly. I love that song. A pirate's oh, life for me. You are a pirate. My son, when he was younger, he was probably about eight or so, he showed me that song. And he, we listened to that goddamn song all the way from Tennessee to Florida. We must have listened to it hundreds of times. I was so tired of that song. But, hey, you know, he's a kid, so. You guys are out of combat. You are a pirate. Gather up treasure and search the walls and the room for any. All of a sudden, a mystical porter, portal opens inside of the chamber. You step through. Congratulations! You're now on the you're now on the world of Charybdis, where we're all Savage Worlds characters. <laughs> next week, we'll play Fifty Fathoms. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh shit! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that would throw you guys for a loop, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> Uh, all right. So there's nothing really in, in this chamber, per se. Just the, the skeletons and whatnot. You search around. You don't see anything else. No no special mushrooms or just a bunch of bones and whatnot. A bunch of uh, feces and stuff from the goblins. Yeah, 50 Fathoms is probably my favorite Jesus plot point campaign, Fargus. I love I love Fifty Fathoms. I Oops, I love it. There goes that magic again. Oops. You are a pirate. <laughs> door to the north, and remember, there's that door way down to the south. Also, do we see any like tracks or anything leading in the store? Yes. investigation check uh, I say to the to the west uh, should we take a, a little west we could take a rest yeah I've got two spell slots left what do you guys want to take a like a long rest Happy, thanks for the follow. If we're going to do that, though, we might want to go back to the octagonal room we were just in. It's easier secure. Or we could go back to the armory. Yeah, that could be an option It'll, for you as well. It would be cleaner. <laughs> yeah. That's certainly the case, yeah. Yeah, we only have to watch out for that. Uh -huh. Trap. We yeah, could use the cow traps to chop the door shut. And yeah, we all have to jump back over the pit. Very nice. Oh, use the door. That's what I did. Well, that's no fun. Rosies. Give me a minus five because you guys are taking a, um, you guys are preparing a little bit. So you can do your D20 minus five. And believe me, the minus five is a bonus. Collard Greens, that's a great name. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the community. Collard Greens. 
You are so lucky you had the minus five bonus for the Pythons getting that door shut. You were so freaking lucky. Because I, I do an encounter in, in places like this on like a uh, 17, 18, 19, 20, and you rolled a 17. But with the minus five, you are so freaking lucky. <clears throat> and yeah, just do a just do a regular 20 because uh, you did athletics there. But just next time, just do minus five and pick up the 20 and 30. Oh, I thought I was doing it for the jump. No, oh, no, the, no. You guys don't even have to do that because you could just kind of, okay. unless you really want to do the jump. Which I mean, your athletics check was really good anyway. You would have made that check with flying colors anyway. So yeah, you guys get a you guys get a long rest, and I'll tell the tracker that it was successful. Snake, thanks for the follow. Hey, what's up, Rolling Rock Runs? How's it going? Now, I'm not fighting a cold. What's up, Stig? And Raider, thanks for the follow. Elias, don't forget to use your... Uh, My I'm AC broke, always cast and it was HR 100 on, degrees so. pretty much today. That's probably why Florida. you've been getting your ass handed to you today. So inside of the house was like 90 freaking degrees almost. And it's still 80, 80 plus degrees in here. And it's... Two o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah, I forgot that. Idea. So I'm hot as hell. Nepkid, thanks for the follow. So you guys are going back up to the north, right? Getting your pythons back. EJRC. Yeah, we'll restock that. Thanks for the follow. Seventy-two we had. So my AC is going to cost seven hundred bucks to fix, but I'm not buying a new motor for it because I'm it's selling this good use out of those things. So I'm not going to fix it. Who's but carrying that, by the way? Yeah, hot as hell is right. I think that's Alliance. I don't even know yeah, what you're all talking about. That was before you showed up. We found an ass load of items. What's up, Verbal Slayer? Get back to the Water goblin area. Pythons. Yeah, have them on me. I mean, they were like six totally bags full. Cool. Yeah, from from the goblins, yeah. Wicked burn, thanks. So is in this that, chamber... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to see if Elias is going to check the door. Yeah, this this chamber here is basically... It's a... It looks like a... Uh, like another chamber with nothing but... But plants growing in it. Salty Girl's great name. So inside of this room, ladies and gentlemen... Actually, just gentlemen, sorry... You're the only pure sausage party game that I have now. Nothing but plants. And you can actually Jimmy look Dean. at these plants. <laughs> Jimmy Dean. <laughs> you can actually tell that these are the plants that were back in the laboratory. All of the, oh, nice. the herbs that were like dry, uh, drying out and stuff. Yeah, this is a whole room full of that stuff. Of course, it doesn't have any value right now because it's still fresh and growing but yeah this stuff is uh would be good base components stuff that's a dime a dozen at a at a uh, alchemist shop anyway thanks pat for the follow hey, one two three for, uh, four five pat check for seeing if there's anything inside that room uh sure you you sure may give me an investigation check perception uh, no. Uh, yeah, investigation. I'm going to start doing gotcha. more investigations. Perception is more your senses and stuff, so... Um, as you're looking around, you step into the room and start looking around. The only thing that you see is the door that's in the lower left-hand corner. And it's actually open a little bit. I will investigate. Okay. Yeah, you can see that there is a uh, a long chamber, actually. And it, and it looks like it. this room actually kind of opens up also. So let me, let me open this up for you. And then it looks like it, it kind of opens up. Curiosity is getting the better of me. I'm kind of uh, picking up my pace. I'm going to step down this hallway. Sounds good. I follow them in. 
Kane, thanks for the follow. So as soon as you enter, you can see that the walls of this place <clears throat> are lined with all kinds of inscriptions on the wall that are nothing but dragons, just like in the other fungus chamber. On the walls, on the ceiling, lots of stony debris on the floor. And as you move into the chamber, there's also a, a door that's on your right-hand side. And then the room kind of rounds out to where there's a, uh, a giant stone statue that's on the western floor, on the western side of the room. And it's made of marble. And it's a, a beautifully painted red dragon and it's kind of rearing back and it's on it's on like a like a pedestal and you can tell that the eye sockets of the dragon are empty but there's like a a very slight reddish glow that's kind of lingering in the eye socket it's like a like a like a reddish type of light fear thanks for the uh, can I follow. approach and investigate uh, sure you can and as you as you do this it you know this this room is also kind of dimly lit and it's because of these these eyes are glowing and it you know the red light kind of spreads throughout the chamber <clears throat> so as, as you get a little bit closer why don't you give me a perception check now in front of the statue there is a uh, it looks like a, a different type of, like a five foot diameter circular tile of, of like dark stone. Definitely different than the floor itself. And it's set into the floor in front of the, in front of the dragon statue. And all around the, 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 that circular tile, there are all kinds of runes and stuff inscripted around the edge of it. Awesome, thanks for the follow. Do I recognize it? Uh, you can give me a Arcana check. Your perception check, as you get a little bit closer, Dag, you can see that there is a, like a shadow behind this statue and it moves your arcana your arcana check you can tell that it's it's kind of, you're getting the sense of strands of transmutation magic it's kind of filling filling the chamber transmutation magic on that circular floor tile also Is there any draconic writings on the wall? There's not draconic, but it's uh, it's basically much like in the in the the fungus room, all kinds of dragons and whatnot. Now, something happens. Now, after you get done looking at this this tile that's on the floor, all of a sudden, you know, you kind of with the the shadowy figure you you kind of saw behind the the statue it uh it basically appears in front of you kind of along the back wall and it looks like this it's a shadowy figure that's for sure and then it reaches out these shadowy hands and arms reach out to grab you. Roll initiative. Oh dear God. Wow, Dag, a one again. Elias, balling with an eight. Uh, yeah, 
Uh, I think I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll roll initiative. Uh, I think I'll... Guys, I'll probably roll another three again. So let's see. Oh, wow. Look at that. Garkin rocks it with an 18. Plus two for a 20. <laughs> Zeese, it looks like you've got the jump on this. Because you see this shadowy figure that steps up from behind the dragon statue. You see it's trying to engulf Dag. So what say you, Zeese? You have an inspiration still. Evil Homer, thanks oh, for the follow, guys. A thank you so much, guys, shadow, so for all of these follows. Hi. I can't thank you guys Run enough. and hide behind the dragon statue. And that's my movement in action. Okay, and this shadowy figure is, is hissing, and then it says... Let the sorceress power illuminate my spirit. All right, Zeus. So you've gone. Garkin, it's your turn. Okay, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move in and draw my, my war hammer. And I'm going to move my 30 feet. And that's all I'm going to do. I guess I could probably... Eh, what the hell? I'll use my action to dash... And next next round I'll try to bash that undead. Cause I can I can tell that this thing's undead. Barlin, you can go ahead and go. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take my full movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it. Take it. Take it, Barlin. That's what she said. And I am gonna pull out uh, scroll of guiding bolt. Thanks, B. And I'm going to cast it at the shadow. Yeah, you can cast that. So it's a second level there's, spell. Yeah, there's a just do an attack roll. Sorry, guys, I'm hot as hell. My AC's broken, so it's like 80 degrees in here at two o'clock in the morning. Nice hit. Hang Guiding on. bolt hits. Guiding bolt is such an underused cleric spell. I mean, it really is. I love Guiding Bolt. And because it is at a second level, it's... The shadow is going to go down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Get it together over there, Barlin. Get it together. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I'm wide <laughs> open, baby. <laughs> Garkin. I hope Garkin doesn't get mad for the way I roleplayed him, basically. <laughs> wow. 17 damage to the shadow. That is... That's a lot of damage. Let's, let's drop that on the shadow. Yeah. 34 damage? That's an instant death. As the shadowy figure just dissipates and just kind of wrinkles wow. into nothing. Oh, wow. Well, it was vulnerable versus um, radiant damage. Then. I've been freed. You guys are out of combat. Good job on that. Good job nice. on Guiding Bolt, yeah. Thanks for saving my bacon. Just make sure you deduct that scroll from your damn inventory. I don't want to look on there and it be on there wow. again. <laughs> Oh, also everybody deduct a day's worth of rations, too, for that long rest. I think I'm probably the only dungeon master on Twitch that actually makes their players deduct rations. <laughs> or deduct torches. I'm probably the only one. I should, You know, that's something that always sits your, in your inventory that never gets touched. I think my level 32 classic cleric has the same eight starting iron rations when I was level one. I hope yeah, that would be nice, Vargas. Yeah, would have mo had mold on it by now. Yeah. So did that shadow drop anything? It it did not, no. It did not. It Sorry, it did not, uh, it did not drop your staff of the Magi that's on your wish list. I would like to investigate these runes on the floor around this five foot square in front of the dragon. 
Sure. You do see that there's a there's a wall on the northern side of the semicircular chamber. <laughs> Same. Yeah. With the uh, the ten foot rope cosms. Yeah. You're you're uh, totally right. Is there anything? Yeah, you know, I, I see a glow kind of, we, as we talk about inside the dragon's eyes. Do mm -hmm. I see anything that might be emanating and causing that light? Why don't you give me a? Well, you would know. Speaking out of character, you could do a couple of things here. You can cast detect magic. You could, you know, you could find out probably more pertinent inf information that way, or you could probably investigate the statue. I will investigate the statue. All right. Feel free to uh, investigate. All right. The only thing that you notice about the about the statue is the the eyes, because you can see inside of the statue, and it's basically down below the eye sockets. There's two gems that are basically mounted on these. It looks like a. It also, well, it it, it looks like a like a torch sconce that's on the wall. It looks like a, a little mini torch sconce inside of the, the cheek area that's mounted that holds a gem, a glowing red gem. And it's sort of like in between the two cheeks on the nose area. And it's that's what's brightly lighting the, the area because it's shining through the, the sockets of the, the statue of the, of the rearing red dragon statue. At the bedroll. It's probably about maybe maybe this maybe it would fit into the palm of your hand do I detect anything magically with it uh, do you use detect magic no you do not detect any kind of magic a lot could open I need Elias. Can you take a look and see if this thing might be trapped? Uh, what do you mean by trap? The there's a gem inside this dragon, and I'm trying to see if we can get it out. But I don't want to set off a booby trap. Okay, I will check it out. Want me to do a perception roll, Dave? To see if it's trapped? Absolutely. You can do that. Don't matter to me. Sure. Shaw, thanks for the follow. Yeah, it looks like there's some there's some type of... It looks like... You can actually see that there's a, a glowing rune that's on the sconce and kind of etched onto the gem. It looks like if you pull that gem out, something would happen. But you're not really... You're not skilled in the arcane arts. But you can definitely tell that something's not... Usually, uh, when you see something like that, it usually means it's a trap. I say, uh, to the daylight, I say, I see a wound there. I think it's a trap of some kind, but I cannot tell what effect it has. Could, could I have you draw the rune so I can look at it? What do you mean? Well, if he points it out to you, you can actually see it now. Okay. You just you just didn't detect it before. You just with your uh, investigation, you just didn't see it. But oh. with the the eyes of the hawk of of uh, Elias there, yeah, he he kind of pointed it out to you. So now you can see it, and uh, I'll let you ascertain what it does if you want to give me an Arcana check. Safi, thanks for the follow. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Now I'm I'm actually gonna seriously reward you for this. That was nice. So as you're looking at it, you can see that this rune will literally destroy the gem that's inside of this little sconce. And the rune is actually what's keeping it magically enchanted as well. It's just a normal 
gem. It looks like it has some value. It's probably worth about 100 gold or so. And it's a beautiful, like, red transparent, like, ruby-ish type of gem. It almost looks like a, almost looks like a, like a glass shard or a crystal shard. And that's what's illuminating is the rune. And you know, if the, the seal is broken on the rune between the little sconce that it's sitting in and the rune that's etched onto the, on the crystal, then it will basically, the light will fade away, but you'll have a, a gem that's valuable. Under gold. I don't think I'm going to sell it. I do want it, though. Yeah, it uh, it just has monetary value, and that rune doesn't have any kind of any kind of magical properties that's going to make it, uh, you know, evocation magic or anything like that. That's going to explode and harm you. The rune simply keeps that gem lit. Thanks, guys, for all the follows. You guys are well, freaking awesome. Thanks, Mr. Bake. No take gem. You put back no desecrate dragon statue. You put gem <laughs> back. Sorry. <laughs> Jeff. Jeff, thanks. I like red gems. Uh, you want, you're going to take it or you want me to take it? You put gem back okay. right now or you suffer consequences. What uh -oh. consequences? I start tapping his ankle with my... Uh, I do this harder if you don't put that. Keep that to yourself. I start jabbing harder. Put gem back. No desecrate statue of gods. How am I desecrating it? I'm just taking the gem. To me, you desecrate. Put back now or suffer. Uh-oh. Dave, I want to step up and put my... Strife hand on Z's, and I want to convince him that those gems have been tainted by that evil. Oh, the, so the gems been tainted by evil? I, I will, I will, uh, I actually like that idea. So why don't you give me a persuasion check, and Z's, why don't you give me a an insight check and and you can do your insight check with advantage because you worship dragons and this is a dragon statue I think that's fair I will entertain that oh man that was a great roll Z's this is what you actually rolled I'm gonna I'm actually gonna take it and take it out of the out of the tower so yeah you rolled a 16 Barlin Roll to twenty one. So, you're you know he does try to convince you. It's ultimately uh, ultimately up to you, but he's sort of like kind of persuading. You're kind of wondering how it would be corrupted. You know what I mean, Zeus? Legit rolls, totally legit. You not desecrate any more statues. You promise. Do I get to keep the gem? You promise no more statues. You can't keep this one gem. Sounds reasonable to me. Deal. I'll be watching you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how... To get back to, to Barlin... How are you trying to convince him? Because this would, this would be some pretty cool role playing. Sorry we're going over. It's past 2 o'clock. Anybody got to get up and go to church in the morning? You guys can play for a little bit more? I'm good. I'm good. So, Barlin, how are you trying to convince Zeus of this as well? I'd, I'd like to hear this. Well, the shadow that popped out obviously was here guarding. And He's we had second thought. You put it back. <laughs> No. We know that some evil wizard or sorcerer came in and des had already <laughs> desecrated it and caused these gems to become infected with Oof. something from the negative material plane. And we need to remove these so we can restore the statue to its glory of its former days. Ooh. Probably the same evil that caused this citadel to fall within the cave here. Powerful Thanks. evil. Thanks, Ish. 
Mm, I like that. And that's oh, part of that persuasion. Oh, if you persuasion. want to restore it to former glory, then it's okay. But still keep promise. Most definitely. We couldn't do this without you, Z's. I like that. Tell you what, because of your faithfulness, I'm going to give you a inspiration. No. I'm I'm whispering to uh, Dragon Edge. If you would have put it back, I would have nicked it. Yeah, I know. We're one big team here. I like that though. I mean, he's he's role playing that kobold good. I mean, he is. Didn't you say this is your first time playing Zeus? A proper game, yeah. Fuck, man. <clears throat> that's that's great. I like it. <laughs> Tearing up your voice, bud? Now, <laughs> now you know what I go through <laughs> on a nightly basis. <clears throat> All Dave, right, so when I, yeah. When I did the investigation on the writing and on the floor about 10 minutes ago, did did I see anything or? On the. I threw it in the, the uh, floor? dice tower. Uh, let me uh, let me roll up. Let's see. Oh yeah, actually you did because as you were basically what the runes were on that you know that circular tile, it basically kind of talks about the gem that's inside of of the statue and what it does. But when you're kind of giving every everything else around the statue once over, you do find that there is a, like a hidden chamber, on the back of the statue. It's like a like a piece of loose stone that was kind of sticking out ever so slightly. Very quietly and indiscreetly, I call Eli Elias over to take a look at it. I don't want to draw attention to. For Z to see this. Okay. Um, give me um, a stealth check, and also I want you to give me a perception check, Zeus. So it's stealth, and put this out. You don't have to put it in the tower. Oh, damn! Uh, that's okay. I, I can. That's tower. okay. I can. I can put it out there. Ooh. You want me to just do perception normal? Yep. Yep. Just in the. Yep. In the tower. Oh yeah, you definitely, Zeus. You definitely see them. And this is this, and I'll be honest. This happened actually before the the gem was taken out. But as you kind of, you want me to do the perception still? Uh, no. It, it was basically stealth versus this is the stealth, which is from Barlin, because Z sees him messing around and you know showing you what's going on back there. And as you move this loose Does these stone, have advantage on all of these skill checks? Mm, let's see. He's got a 1d6 roll. I think that was, what, for guidance or something like that? What is that? Effects 1d6 roll, d100? No, that would be... That was my bardic That's inspiration. Bardic inspiration, right? Yeah. But uh, it's like he, right, the tower skill insight advantage drop a 9. What's that? Disease. Roll another. Roll another. Not with a. Roll another one. Let's see what. Well, I, I mean, uh, yeah, it was. I mean, it was. He would. He would have seen it anyway. So. Thank you. So yeah, he, he sees you uh, messing around with the little loose stone on the back. What do you do back here? And I pull my disease. Not you anymore. No, Z's. This was before Take a look that, at this. Though, oh, Inside, <laughs> there's some there's some gold. There's a, it looks like there's about thirty, like thirty four or forty four gold, and there's a couple flasks of alchemist fire, and you already know what the alchemist fire looks like, so yeah. And then there's forty four gold too. So you guys role play that out because he was like, "Hey, check this out, Z's." What should we do with this? 
looks like somebody hid something in the back here. A sack of coins and a couple fire potions. And this happened, this actually, like I said, this happened just before the the eye, you know, pulling the gem out. Is he asking me? Yeah. Well, he yeah, was saying, you what do you think it. of this? Yeah, because you did notice him back there fiddling around with this loose stone. It was in the base of the statue? Yeah, at the base of the statue, yep. Like a, it's like a little hidden compartment back there. He's playing that kobold great. I'm, I'm impressed. This is his first game. I think game maybe you right? leave. Maybe this tribute to dragon gods. I mean, well, you that's, take a look that's at awesome. It. You take a look and tell us what you think. <laughs> there's a there's a coin slot on the front of that thing like a piggy bank. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> So what like, was that little the bank that you put it in and it comes up and it puts it in his mouth and it eats it or something? Oh, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? Is it just like a loose stone and it's got stuff behind it? Yeah, it, it's like a little hidden compartment, yeah. We're going into overtime tonight, folks. I'm going to put all of my gold, silver, and treasure in it. Wow. And then put the stone back. Wow. Zeus paying tribute. Wow, you're how much are you giving it? Ten gold. Ten gold, two fifty six silver, ninety four GB, and forty five gems. Wow. I pat him on the shoulder and said, "You are very rare amongst your kind, my friend." Now come over here and help me investigate these rooms. And I wink at Elias when we walk over here. <laughs> They're going to jack all that money. <laughs> you guys are going to jack all that money over there. I love it. <laughs> oh, my God. You guys are great. Oh, my God. That's so good. Yeah. Great job, Zeus. Yeah, you don't have to put that in the tower. <laughs> wow. That was a uh, that was definitely a, a crit. It was a 20, 20 plus 4 plus 3. Zeus, give me an uh, give me a perception check. And you don't have to put it in the tower. Wow. Yeah, they. That's you, awesome. You do not notice it as Elias sneaks behind there and kind of pulls everything out of the. <laughs> pulls everything out of there. Oh, man. I'm just I, looking at the ruins with Barlow and stuff. All right. I whispered to Elias, good thing, man. I would have pilfered it too. <laughs> and later on, I'm gonna split it with Fallen. For like we have over there. Ah, yeah, yeah. So, what do you guys think? You guys have another door here in front. I'm itching to go for that door. Yeah, let's check that door out. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll check it out. Z, so I'm going to give you an extra inf uh, inspiration, even though the inspiration resets. I really like the way you're playing your kobold, man. Hats off, man. I'm going to give you a, you'll have two uh, inspiration yeah. at the start of next session instead of, instead of uh, one. So you open up this door here. It's not trapped or anything. We'll, we'll save the formalities on that. And it's a, a small chamber. It looks like a a small little library because inside of this small little 20 by 20 room there's a bunch of leaning leaning and falling bookshelves that are filling up this entire chamber. Lots of rubble from the roof, from the walls. 
there's a uh, and actually there is a wooden door on the other side of this chamber and strewn throughout this entire room is a bunch of torn pages a bunch of burnt pages a bunch of bindings from books a bunch of broken and uh, non-usable scroll cases piled up all over the place hey oh, Paul well. and you have to come and look here a lot of uh, papers and broken scroll, ca uh, scroll cases cool do we see anything in here that I, that's legible uh, if you're in the room whoever's in the room why don't you guys give me investigation checks if you're kind of rooting around the, the room. <clears throat> Dag, why don't you give me a... Uh, no, actually, you already did. So Barlin, king of skill checks... Everybody's rummaging through, but you have the highest roll. There are several good scroll tubes. And you find one in particular. Well, actually, all the scroll tubes are basically ruined, except for one in particular. And it has a couple of scrolls in it. And then you're kind of rooting around. And... Dag, you find a, a a tome, and this tome, you're kind of opening it up and looking through, it and it's just all kinds of dragon lore, all kinds of lore about dragons, and you can actually read it because it's in draconic, and it's probably worth about 150 gold or so now as for the scroll tube that you had found barlin there's a spell of scorching ray there is a spell scroll of milf's acid arrow or milf's acid arrow and that's it so you found two scrolls and you also found which dag he found the tome of dragon lore and it has all kinds of information about the chromatic dragons very nice so who wants the tome who wants the scrolls or should i just put it in the party sheet and we'll you guys can mess with it later up to you guys i'll go ahead and take the tome okay You can go ahead and take it out of the, the party sheet. Here's the scroll of Scorching Ray. Here is the scroll of Acid Arrow. And you guys have basically looked at the entire chamber. And that is everything that you found here. Except for the obvious wooden door on the northern side of this chamber. I'm gonna look at that door. Okay. You give it a good once over, you open it up, and it's a 20 foot wide chamber that takes a sudden right turn. And you can see that there's stairs that's descending down about 20 to 30 feet as well. Uh, guys, looks like there are stairs going downwards. And it's pitch black, by the way. Yeah, but I mean, I see the, the beginning of the stairs going downwards, so why not? You do. Yeah, especially from where you're, you're at. Yes, you can see that the stairs do descend. And it doesn't look like there is any light at all coming from from that chamber that's traveling to the east and like i said it descends down about 30 feet so it's basically going you know, it's basically under this the plant room that you guys just just went through 
But it's pitch black on there. Yep, no light at all. A little bit more experience. I'm tempted to go back south because I remember we have another door to go through. Yeah, I'd like to finish this level off before we go down any further. Sure. Okay. If we have any time. I'm sure we could squeak out a little bit more time. If you guys don't mind, I've got the time. So. Yo, Dag, you should be able to round out your spell book really nicely with uh, all the scrolls we're finding. Well, they don't, have, they don't have a book per se. I believe warlocks only know a certain I'm, amount of spells. I'm a wizard. A, a wizard. I'm, yeah, no, he does. He's yeah. So yeah, the the spells would. I, I don't know why. I was thinking because of Jod is from the Elemental Chaos. I don't know why I had a brain fart thinking that you well, were like, a. Uh, well, because I have minions, chaos. I'm a necromancer, so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know. I keep forgetting about that. I can't wait till you get higher level and get those summons. That's going to be pretty cool. I could have Raised Dead now, but I'm choosing not to do it because I know I get it at level 6. That's kind of, I, I know this as my... I studied this when I was part of the character. I mean, I, out of character anyway. I, I studied this when I was in the basement at the very beginning, which I often just often lay that story out sometime. It's my backstory for how I got to who I got to where I am. Mm, I like that. So there's all kinds of these subterranean ecosystems down here: the plants, the fungus. Elias, give me a perception check as you're kind of giving this door the once over, putting your ear up to it, feeling it in case it's hot. Oh my gosh, that is a an amazing roll. Elias, and you can hear goblins yelling at each other behind behind the door, basically. I put my, my finger to my mouth and I say, and I whisper, goblins. To the rest. Yeah, that's one. You can get to drop on them, that's for sure. Because this door is, is not locked. It's like the other doors. You could probably get the, the element of surprise if you choose so. And th at this point in time. Lots of bone rush, though. Yeah. You guys will get a, a free round of actions of surprise. With advantage. And you get a plus one. Well, Barlin, that is. All right, so you guys rush in. <laughs> four, four goblins. Voila. There they are. Who wants to go first? You guys just want to go. Uh, I'm in form, so. Why don't you guys roll initiative first? Why don't you guys roll initiative first? Oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and let's let's roll some initiative. Garkin. Yeah, yeah. Initiative. Yeah. Back to the bottom. Yeah. Just where I like to be. Clean up everybody's freaking mess. Hm? Sorry. Garkin's going to be... What the hell's he doing? Okay, so Dag, what say you? You've got the element of surprise, so any... any uh, Magical attack will be with advantage. Sorry if you guys can hear my my fan uh, blowing the in the background. But I'm hot as shit. Wall. I'm going to fire off a scorching ray. Oh. Wow. You're going full. Blowing you're going your... balls deep on those goblins with a scorching ray. Yeah. I like it. I'm going to target commoner 2. Goblin over far on my left side, and Goblin one, Commoner one. Okay.
Wow. Critical hit. 24 on the first one. Very nice attack. Second is a hit. Third is a hit. All of them are hit. So why don't you roll damage on, on each one? So the goblin, it dies. Commoner number one. Thanks, Just Killer. Instant death to another goblin commoner. You're lighting up like the Starship Enterprise, dude. Oh, well, you can see my face right now? <laughs> All three of them are dead. They just basically disintegrate into nothingness from from the damage of your Scorching Ray. <laughs> and then the last goblin there, you hear him go, Uh-oh! <laughs> he, puts, he puts his shovel down. And he, and he says and something in, in Goblin. I stop, lunge forward, and say, you're next. Uh-oh. Well, he just... While uh, Derek Reich was doing that, I, I was saying, like, an awesome pose. He gets Fire down on his lasers. knees, Fire and he lasers. starts... <laughs> Fire the lasers. Elias is yelling that behind you as you see these three goblins just disintegrate in front of your eyes. Looks like like Cyclops, the uh, Cyclops with his with his eye goggles. Now, this this goblin here, he gets down on his knees, and he starts kind of like he's worshiping you, Dag, sort of, as he gets down on his knees, and he starts saying something in Goblin, which you can't understand Goblin. Anybody here? He oh, look, let's, let's see. I don't think any of us can get. Oh, I can learn it. Yep, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't. You don't. Nobody actually understands him, and he's just continuing to get down on his on his knees, and it looks like he's kind of bowing towards you and groveling. Well, this he's, is obviously he's facing you, Doug. I'm gonna have to. I'm going to use comprehend languages because I'm curious as to what he's saying. I've never seen a goblin do this before. <laughs> so I'm going to send my first level spell slot to learn goblin. Thanks, Rentor. <laughs> this is what he says. I'm going to send you a tell. Yes, indeed. You said it back in Goblin. He he just looks at you like, oh, and he just he's just going to town. Just continues to, and and he actually takes his pouch, and he throws his pouch towards you and calls it tribute to the great fire god. <laughs> tell everybody else stand down. I got an idea. All right. I tell the Goblin. The great fire to god. To leave here. Any other goblins he sees to send word that there's... To tell them what happened here today. Yeah. Okay. I will go ahead I and we'll end the game. <laughs> nice. You pick it up. There's, uh, I think there, there's like 20 silver in it. So we'll go ahead and we'll end the game here for this week.